Good afternoon, Laser Cats and other listeners. The It's Today show is finally back, and I am your host, Kelsey. We have Ida, of course, but we also have a new cast member with us today, Alex. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we're hoping to see more of us. I sure want to do more shows. And um, Shout we're back. out to Mr. Amoruso. He's been asking yes. about this. Mr. Amoruso, we're back. And all of our other listeners, we are officially back. And thank you, Aaron, for running the board for us today. Okay, so guys, we have a topic, a hot topic. In fact, just at 2.15, Adam Silver um, announced the, well, he, he is the NBA commissioner, announced the decision on uh Donald Sterling. Um, as many people know, he's Donald Sterling has been in hot water over a video that's come out or a recording that's come out. Um, kind of his views were, let's say, uncovered. Again, it was a private conversation between him and his girlfriend, and he did not say anything vulgar but his views on black people, as, quote, as I'm quoting him, um, were not in the best light. And it was very offensive to many people, especially Clippers players. Okay, so the final decision that Adam Silver made was a lifetime suspension and a fine of $2.5 million. And let me just say that this will be donated to tolerance and anti-discrimination organizations, so yay for that. Woo. But we are here to discuss, so I just want to know, what are you guys feeling about this sort of punishment? Does the punishment fit the crime? We'll start with Alex. Hmm. Well, it was a private conversation, and he really shouldn't be, because in a way it's sort of like freedom of speech, and you really should be able to say what you feel about things. But at the same time, the league itself has a like a c constitution or contract of some sort, and it really doesn't fit to the requirements of like you know the behavior mm -hmm. that he's supposed to have, which he is showing that he doesn't. And this sort of evidence kind of goes back to all the other past offenses he's made, and serves as proof. You make a very good point, and. I believe this very strongly, that the invasion of privacy here was a little bit, you know, also not in the right, you know what I mean? Like, people have a right to privacy. They have a right to their beliefs. And this was supposed to be a private conversation, and it came out, now it's public, but P um, Adam Silver said that it didn't matter that it was a private conversation. Now it is public. Now we know his views. They can't just ignore it. Now, Ida, how do you feel about this privacy issue? Hmm. I think uh, hmm. it's very fitting that it would happen now, very close to, um, it's almost forgotten now, but uh, very close to the Edward Snowden incident. Um, so it's kind of still fresh in our minds. So there's like this battle between there's the right to privacy, but there's also like a greater thing going on here. Also, let's um, take a moment to look beyond um, this situation. Like Silver decided, um, Silver, right? Yes, he decided to find this man for two point five million dollars mm -hmm. to ban him. He's gonna try to get him to sell his team. You still have this very influential billionaire man, racist man, out in the world, going to do whatever he wants. Maybe he's not going to, you know, obviously we can't put him in jail, but you see how this, um, this tape recording came into the media in a firestorm, and just like that, it's going to fizzle out. And people need to realize that this isn't the end of... Um, we were watching the conference, and a lot of the ex-NBA players were saying how this wasn't the first time they've experienced racism from, like, upper management, but it's the first time that it's been getting such a, like, a media sensation, you know? So I think that people need to realize that this isn't the end of it. This is just the beginning of it, and they need to keep working on it. And that one little 
um, punish it. And just because he was caught and he was punished doesn't, like, make the whole NBA clean. You need to keep working. And that's right. And one thing that kind of did affect me personally, um, as we all know, uh, discrimination is not okay mm -hmm. and it should not be accepted. But this is not the first time that Sterling had been accused of discrimination. Mm -hmm. And it and it, it still continues, I'm sure, through many organizations, not only the NBA. But at what point do people begin to notice discrimination? When it comes out on such, and especially with social media, they're saying that it, it spreads like wildfire, that people can connect to it. But at what point do we start tackling such an issue? Let's like look at the black civil rights movement, like just because this is what the topic is about. Back when um, they were bat Martin Luther King and all those people were battling racism, mm -hmm. discrimination was so much more straightforward. You had laws that you wanted to change. You had people that were getting their rights that didn't have many rights, and that was their goal. They had a set goal. Nowadays, discrimination is so blurred and fizzed and grayed because what is the point between, um, you know, freedom of speech and discrimination? What is the point between privacy and discrimination? What is the point between all of this public and private affairs? So it's kind of hard to say who's right and who's wrong and who shouldn't have given the tape and who should do this in that kind of context. In a way, it's really not, you know, all black and white, you know, no pun intended or anything like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's, there is a lot of gray area, like you said, and it's a matter of not just, okay, like, he's a racist and, you know, he shouldn't be here. It's a matter of, okay, he's, these are his views, but, you know, we live in a free country that's, we're supposed to be able to say whatever we want and yet he's getting fined like 2.5 million just because he made a racist remark. And it kind of makes you think like, like, can you really say anything anymore? And was it really okay? Was it, was it just like a really bad circumstance he was in? It was like the wrong place at the right time. So do you think the NBA is overreacting or underreacting? I mean, they have a right to overreact because of the, like, you know, their, the ethnicity of their players is very like vast in a way and it would be it's really offensive to have someone working in upper management and they mm -hmm. have feelings about that because it could kind of affect the players themselves like okay I don't want to get do this because they're the, they're the skin is this color mm. and that's not fair to them to be feeling like nervous every time upper management has to make a decision like upper management should not have any sort of bias and yet he does which makes it a problem. I just have one other point I want to touch on. Now, Sterling has his own personal beliefs, and if you look back at the recording, we were watching it earlier, um, he says that it's been his historically uh, confirmed and also um, his beliefs were instilled upon him as, at a young age that he can't change his quote unquote, his culture. Um, so, in a way, we can't change someone, right? Mm -hmm. Especially he's 80, you know, you can't change. He's like just stuck in his ways at this point. That's what I'm trying to get at. But at the same time, when you're representing a whole entire organization, you can't have someone in that place. What he did was not wrong in the sense that he did it in the privacy of his own home, but at the same time, you can't support that. And I think that's what we're trying to get at. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, and, and especially in this case, the punishment does fit the crime. So the It's Today panel says that this punishment fits the crime, right? Everyone grab your pitchforks, woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're hitting the gavel. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Don't hit uh, it, like, that hard, that but hard, I'm just, mind. like, I'm in the middle of all this. Like, I don't really know, like, it's not right, but it's not wrong. It's somewhere in between, and it's a lot of gray. But what he said is wrong. 
Yes, in a what sense. he said it was but wrong. Whoever but whoever gave the tape was even more wrong, and two wrongs don't make a right, so. Now, that's another good topic, Alex. Who gave in the tape? It was, uh, people are saying, the uh, the girlfriend. And she's obviously much younger. No one knows who she is. You know, well, they don't know of her, <laughs> her name. They know who she is now. Uh, her name uh, was V. Stefiano, I, th- I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are saying she was trying to get back at Sterling. Now, again, two wrongs don't make a right. What do you guys think about her? So she didn't, she didn't, um, possibly she was even recording and saying things that she knew would provoke him. Did you notice that too? Like mm-hmm. he, she was egging him on. She was egging him on. She was saying a lot of stupid stuff too, not to sound mean. Like, in my heart, I'm not this, or in my heart, she I'm was, not that. I'm she like, was that's very, very poetic. I it's felt. like really it stupid. Scripted, yeah, in my like opinion. I kind of hated it a little bit. I was like, she is so fake. It's it looks not like, even funny. It looks like it was scripted, mm-hmm. but I'm not. You know, people are gonna say, oh, that those are her beliefs. You can't question that. But it sounded so automatic, so whitewashed, yeah. so politically correct. I find it hard to believe that she would be together with this man for so long and, and not know anything. And about given his her views. ethnicity, it's kind of like kind of funny in a sense because you know he's racist and <laughs> it, you're like Mexican and African American so in a way it's like why are you with this person are you just doing this for the money are you doing it because you know you can get something on him mm-hmm. like you have to look at her that way too it's all about the money guys <laughs> that's what the world runs on the money and you know People are going to say what they want. There's going to be different opinions. You know, he's entitled to his privacy. He's not entitled to that much privacy. It goes back and forth. The main thing, discrimination is wrong. Stop it. Don't, uh, don't do it. I'm going to interrupt yes. you here uh, if I can weigh in on this. I agree. I, I think she set him up. Mm-hmm. I think she, uh, if she taped it, she knew how to push his buttons, and she... Uh, wanted to reveal his inner nature, and uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, he said, you know, he revealed himself. But I, I think she kind of knew where she was going with this. But and, then, do the ends know. justify the means? Like, no matter what her intents were, she right. still probably did a good thing for the NBA. I think so. Yeah, so. yeah, mm-hmm. she did do a good thing. But uh, I think she, it was planned. Maybe. I think so was planned, and uh, uh, I don't know if she had broken up with him or was thinking of breaking up with him, or sh- he had done something that she found reprehensible. But uh, again, I don't know how long she went with him. Uh, she must have known he felt like this before this. I mean, he must have said stuff, but uh, um, uh, there's no as as the uh, commissioner said uh, there's no room for this but there there's going to be controversy over this uh, you brought out some interesting points about privacy uh, should that ha- should that be revealed like it was uh, maybe as Ida said the better good was done here but uh, I think we're going to be talking about this and the nation's going to be talking about this for a long time so uh, you know, and it's, I don't think it's just an isolated incident uh, with him also just, you know, focusing on him. I think it's a larger problem. There's so. a string of stories saying that he has been uh, yeah. discriminatory towards right. other players, towards um, minorities, and mm-hmm. maybe it just took this occurrence mm-hmm. to finally end it. Right. So maybe in some regards, it's a good thing. We'll see right. it as a good thing. Now. But he, he's, uh, even if they make him sell it, which they probably will make him sell it, he's still going to walk off with seven, $800 million in his pocket. So he's not penalized. He's not going to be penalized monetarily, although they put a $2.5 million uh, fine on him, which is a drop in the bucket for him. He's a multi-billionaire. What really his his legacy is going to be one of a, a racist and one of a, 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 a kind of a, a disease that uh, he epitomizes in our society. But uh, 
uh, we shall see how this plays out. But I think the NBA had to do this. I think Sterling uh, had to do this because everybody, economically, as as you said, uh, uh, that uh, everything is about the money. And Kelsey, you're right because all these uh, advertisers and all these uh, supporters of the NBA were pulling out. And if this was allowed to continue, the whole league would have been in peril. So it is about, on one aspect, it is definitely about the money. Yes. And it's a big aspect. The world runs on money. We all know right. that. It's a very sad thing, but mm -hmm. thank you guys right. for listening. We are out of time. It's the It's Today show with... Ida, Alex, and myself, Kelsey. Woo! We will be back. It's today is officially back. Thank Yay! you, Aaron, for running the board for us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.